Good morning, everybody. Actually, quite an interesting morning. First of all, I'm gonna take a slightly different route. Slightly illegal, but I wanna save time. And other than that, we had a slate of very interesting games yesterday. I'm wearing today Italy, of course, because Italy, Italy, Italy finally has won. Looks pretty, um, looks pretty. Not in the standings, but I think the way they played is uh, really, it was convincing in a way, except for making the goals. And let me just adjust the camera slightly, so I think now I'll be a little bit better. Yeah, so <laughs> I've been missing wearing Italy shirts, I've been missing wearing Holland shirts even more because Italy was at least somewhat good um, at the Euros and so, well, uh, but it's also an interesting day because I was just at my bank and I met my bank advisor, banking advisor, the one that I have who is and I'm stop for this. He gave me free last tickets. <laughs> the games are in December, but yeah, I can go to a game for free. And I took enough that I can take the entire family with me. That to me sounds like fun. Although December might be a cold game, might be a cold game, but we'll see how it will go. Yep. But let's talk about Nations League, shall we? I think that's why I'm here making this video. I think you saw there's a golf course and it's foggy on the golf course. Uh, that's another thing. I don't want to watch a Serie Golf, but I want to try this game at once. But for me, anything with hand-eye coordination, I'm horrible. Uh, if I play tennis, horrible. If uh, table tennis, no. It's just something in me that doesn't work. And I tried once mini golf and uh, it was a complete failure. But you know, I think you gotta try it at least once. And uh, then see. But Nations League, first of all, uh, let me apologize to all Israel and Albania fans. Uh, I completely forgot about you guys yesterday. Uh, and it was mainly because I went through my head the games that I watched. And I watched the highlights of Israel and Albania. Um, and yeah, it was a 2 nothing win for Israel. Uh, first the goalkeeper was a little bit playing out of his mind for Israel, saving saving the Israelis there and then uh, two goals and suddenly Israel has sort of turned it around and is now sitting quite nicely atop of their group the only team with six points yes they have still the game in Scotland and that uh, probably will decide who is going on but you know having already a win against Scotland although a away goal you never know uh, but yeah new coach Andy Herzog from Austria, of course, seemingly gets something going there. I'm curious to watch their progress. But yeah, they have one more game in Scotland, a draw there, and I think they will qualify because Scotland, yeah, a draw there, I think, will do the trick. Uh, jersey matchup there. I like the Israeli jerseys, um, the Albania with the red and the black. Uh, it seemed like the light against it, it looked very stark in a way. Uh, really... <laughs> I like the red, 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 red and the black, but it was really like this is the bad army coming there. It reminded me more about Star Wars in a way. But yeah, it's the Albania colors and it's a very, very strong look. But no, we're not talking about Albania and uh, Israel for long. Uh, I watched most of the big game yesterday, which was of course England in Spain, and boy was it a game. Um, I always had the feeling that this might be a good game, and the only thing is that Spain was playing so out of their minds uh, as of late that I really had the feeling, yeah, this could be 3-0 at halftime and then England is trying to hang on. It was 3-0 at halftime, but for the other team. <laughs> oh, what a turn of events. The game started with Spain uh, 
morning to swallow England. I mean, they had a chance within for the first two, two minutes. And then I think the big turning point in the game for me was when Eric Dyer made this, I think it was Eric Dyer. I always want to say Kieran, but I think it's Eric Dyer. Eric, it's Eric Dyer, of course. Um, made this uh, tackle on Ramos inside the opposing box. Uh, which caused a little bit of scuffle. He thought it was a clean tackle, it probably was because he played the ball. A free kick was given for uh, Spain. But sort of this aggressiveness, I had the feeling galvanized England and quite some. Uh, shortly thereafter, I need to check here. I don't want to get stuck on the zebra. But if people are not moving. Because shortly thereafter, um, you know, Spain had control, looked really, I mean, looked like Spain. You know, a very assertive moving forward, but maybe not with too much uh, direct movement towards goal. More like, let's pass them uh, to death and show them that we are superior on the ball. And one surprise to me was that Paco Alcacer was not playing. Because uh, in the previews of the game, we always read how he's in tremendous shape. I mean, he scored for Dortmund like crazy. He scored uh, two against Wales. So uh, that was surely a little bit of a surprise. But then there was a, a counter attack on the Rashford, beautifully from the side, beautifully played a uh, cross, flat cross, uh, crossed the box to uh, Raheem Sterling, who nets it in wonderfully. 15 minutes gone, 1 0 for England. And at that point, I think they were, England was also ahead against Spain in Wembley. So it kind of felt, yeah, okay, the goal was scored now, Spain has. Uh, has the motivation to really uh, dominate them, as they did in Wembley in the second half. Although the game, they could have gotten, England couldn't have gotten across the area. I remember this as one of the better, if not the best game of the first set of Nations League plays. Play. And yeah, um, Spain were coming and were trying to assert themselves, didn't have chances, but you know, England was defending very nicely and you could see that uh, they are really waiting on the counter. They were, uh, they were lying deep and that I think surprised Spain because that way Spain cannot uh, use the full pace in attack. And yeah, as it goes, uh, England scored a second. Again, a counter attack. Uh, Kane had the ball, and I gotta say, the defending of Spain was rather poor around there. I mean, there was, uh, I think it was Kane, and there were three Spaniards and Rashford. Uh, three or four Spaniards. You know, it was not that it seemed like this is now a super difficult uh, thing to defend, but Kane played a wonderful pass on Rashford, who is in, uh, alone in front of his team at the hair. And, and puts it in. After all the misses against Croatia, Rashford scores a goal. And he now was a part in the first two goals. And suddenly England had the upper hand. Uh, and you could feel Spain got nervous and now uh, England was pressing uh, high, really putting, um, putting Spain in a lot of trouble. Um, for uh, offensive pressing like crazy, and that was led to the third goal for England. Uh, Spain was pressed on, they lost, uh, they lost the ball, got it quickly again, and then suddenly um, it's again Kane who has the ball in the box. It was beautifully played by England, really nice one touch, almost one touch, well, it was not really one touch, but it's a few passes, and then Kane uh, puts it through across the goal, and Sterling nets in for a second and the three, I don't know if you would call them nominal strikers, but the, th uh, the three offensive players uh, combined for three goals. That's how it went. Uh, everyone uh, came to assist, Sterling two goals, Rashford one goal, one assist. The game seemed done and dusted, but I had the feeling, and, and I, it was also it was at this point that I kind of said to my wife, uh, 
let's go to bed but uh, we've started talking a little bit and so and I knew that I, I, I don't want to turn, I turn it uh, off right now Vic. Yeah, there was a feeling that I will be responsible for Spain. Well, it wasn't immediate, but Ari Kasser came on in the 56th and two minutes later he had uh, the goal for Spain, 1-3. And confirming that he is in great form at this moment. And uh, it was a wonderful head. I mean, it was a corner. I don't think you can say much about defending there, but... Um, he headed in nicely. Uh, also, I have to say before we uh, we go deep in the second half, England had the three 0 lead, but I think they had three shots on goal. So uh, super efficient, but in a way they played it super smart. It was a very clever play by England. I gotta say that. So um, of course Spain was had the majority of the possession, but I actually felt that. Uh, when it was 2-0, then it could easily be 3-0. Uh, and that's exactly what happened, because Spain just was a little bit out of it at that point. Yeah. So, Alcacer makes it 1-3. Just a five minutes later, another scuffle. It uh, was an easy ball to Pickford. Pickford is playing around a little bit. I think it was again Alcacer who gets the ball of him and Pickford pulls him back when he would have a clear shot on an empty goal uh, and then tackles the ball away. Um, you know, I've <laughs> much less clear penalties have been given. This, you know, uh, at the first when you see it from behind, it looks like, yeah, he's uh, jostling behind him and then uh, makes a nice tackle to, um, to the corner. But when you see it from the side, I mean, the way he's holding back the attacker, it's a clear penalty. There are no two ways about it. And that one would have put Spain right back into the game. And I think uh, Spain would have at least, at least have gotten equalized there. Because uh, Spain were furious at that point. Having those two goals would have made this a game. And I have a feeling it would have ended 3-3 three, three, three. But no, it didn't. England held on. Spain had a lot of possession, but never really threatened again. They only in stoppage time, which was seven minutes. Uh, since I was not that attentively watching the second half any, any, anymore, I guess it was because of all the scuffle around the penalty and all the protests there. Uh, but yeah, they hit the bar. I think in the 95th and then Ramos with the last kick of the game headed it in to the net, make it 2-3. Uh, I honestly have to say, Ramos made his goal, yes, but I think that many people see Ramos uh, also as a weakness already in the Spanish game. Because it, I had the feeling that in defense, the Spanish defense, is not this uh, tough defense that they used to be in, a, a, anymore. Piquet is not playing anymore and Ramos I think is he is a leader clearly and he is the galvanizing point for Spain but I honestly have the feeling that he's way past his prime and it might not surprise me if uh, within two years Ramos is not playing for the national team anymore. I think he is slowly becoming a liability that's how I feel it for him. 3 2 for England, the first win in Spain since 1987 in Spain. After 27 year, uh, games, Spain loses again. And they still look the favorites to win this group. They just need a draw in. Do they need a draw? No, they need a win. They need a win in Croatia. And then England needs to beat Croatia. England would go into the uh, final four. But of course, yeah, yeah, Spain still has it very much in their own hands to uh, secure the spot in the final four. Other games. Uh, we had uh, Switzerland and Iceland. I almost, almost forgot about that one. Switzerland got to a 2 0 lead um, in the second half. I think the first half ended 0 0 and uh, no one was really talking about it much. Uh, Switzerland got the two goals, I think it was Seferovic 
the score one. Iceland had chances to equalize, but when you don't make a chance, I think they, uh, well, they didn't hit the bar. They had the chances, but um, Switzerland made the second and a beautiful goal by Finn Bogason. Uh, and Iceland actually would have had the chance to equalize again. But this way, yeah, Switzerland has now six points, Belgium has six points, there will be a final on the last day if we will make it, and Iceland is unfortunately relegated. But that seemed like a foregone conclusion anyway. In League B, uh, we, yeah, and Jersey matchups, all of them as expected. I actually liked uh, England in all white against Spain, looks actually quite nice. I think um, not having it that way as they played in Wembley looked uh, weird. I actually think it was my, uh, way better this time around. Group B we had, of course, from the Austria group, Bosnia playing against Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland seemingly needed to get a third jersey, a white one, because neither their uh, green nor their uh, light blue matches well with the Bosnia. So that I will put in a video of makeup jerseys. I think I need to work on that. Uh, so that maybe by tomorrow or Wednesday week, or maybe the next time around, we can look at a few more jerseys. Um, well, Northern Ireland had a chance early, then Bosnia, Bosnia, Bosnia. Uh, Jaco scored, Jaco should have. Uh, it was very tight. I mean, there was a goal not given for offside where a free kick was lobbed over the wall and Jaco wall is it home. Beautiful goal. I would have liked for uh, this to stand except for the result. Uh, I honestly wanted to have, if it's a win, a narrow win for either of the two. But yeah, um, Bosnia got the lead, um, should have done two. Then Northern Ireland came back and <laughs> missed the goal. I mean, open net uh, for the Northern Irish attacker and he hits the post. And right at the counter, Jenko hits his second. And that was it. So it's 2 0 for Bosnia, which I wanted Bosnia to win, but 1 0 or something like that. Now with 2 0, they basically they sitting really well in having secured the um, promotion spot. Um, because now the next uh, next and final game is against Austria. Uh, draw will see them through. Austria needs to beat them. Uh, if Austria beats them by a one nil, then they're even. Then Austria needs to win uh, by two goals in Northern Ireland, which I don't see happening. Playing in Belfast is the one thing where you can never rely on Austria. I don't see them getting through there. Uh, I actually am quite. If they need to get, uh, they need to get a result in Belfast. I don't see it, but at least now uh, they can, uh, with a draw against Northern Ireland, uh, they will avoid uh, relegation. But yeah, um, that two 0 really puts uh, Bosnia firmly in the driver's seat. And the way Austria was playing as Northern Ireland, I honestly don't see uh, how they would do the miracle in getting not only the six points, but also getting the right results. The 2 0 against uh, Bosnia and uh, the win in Northern Ireland. It's a uh, goal difference, is, is the big killer there. But yeah, at least. Uh, as far as I see, you need to only get one point out of the last two games and you're not relegated. And at least that's something uh, for Austria, so at least you, you save, you almost save yourself from rele relegation. But uh, the aspiration, of course, was winning the group. And they still can, but I honestly don't see it. Uh, they really, the, the way they messed up the game. Uh, against Bosnia uh, away from home. That was um, absolute shame, I have to say. And yeah, 
uh, they should have gotten the draw and the draw would have uh, kept them really alive. But no. The thing is, now we see the path, but Austria is not um, good at taking those paths. The Austrian soul is more like uh, yeah, this is really hard. This is really hard. Let's settle for uh, <laughs> second best results. This is, and, they, and you see me talking about it. I, I would like to see it, but I don't. Uh, other nations would use this as a big uh, galvanizing point. I am afraid it's not going to happen. And that leads us to Group C. So we are also League C, uh, the second group. Uh, my favorite group. <laughs> no two ways about it. And the big clash there was that Greece played in Finland. And yeah, right after halftime, Finland gets the 1 0 and has chance after chance after chance after chance to make it 2 0. It's totally surprising me. Uh, I thought that Greece will grind out the draw there or um, even get the win. I didn't see Finland winning. I totally stunned. For me, Finland is overperforming. They have not conceded a goal yet. Uh, that's a real stunner. I mean, Finland in League B is something that you would not have uh, imagined. But they're putting together a really nice run. Now, is it over for um, Greece? Greece, uh, the other game, ended in a 3-3 draw. In what I call a perfect 3-3. Uh, Estonia got their first goal in the Nations League. Uh, Hungary turned the game around, it was 2-1. Then Estonia scored th uh, two goals, make it 3-2 for Estonia. And Hungary got the late equalizer, make it 3-3. Which basically means the only team that can get Finland is Greece. However, they only can get level on points. So Greece needs to beat Finland 2-0. Uh, to have any type of chance and then you need the help. Uh, yes, you have, you're playing Estonia at home, that is a help for you, but then you also need the help uh, that Hungary beats Finland. And that's an even tougher proposition than Austria. At least Austria has it in their own hands, Greece hasn't. Uh, Finland totally controls this group. Uh, and is the auto favorite. I mean, it's really... I think it's, un it's highly unlikely to me that um, Finland does not finish first there. Which is a downer for if you're a fan of the Greek national team. I was really surprised about that. Um, but you know, it's great to see uh, other nations also coming up. So yeah, that was uh, leagues A, B, C, all the matchups and uh, Roundup for uh, the England game. Uh, I know the Albania Israel game, I want to say from yesterday that I, told, I totally forgot because I wanted to talk about uh, Germany and their path. Yes, that's the big game tonight, of course. Germany against France. There's another big game in League C, which is Norway Bulgaria, which is a similar situation just with the reverse total advantage between um, Iceland, up oh, Iceland, Finland and Greece. Uh, basically Norway needs to win this one uh, to see this through. If there's a point for Bulgaria, Bulgaria looks uh, in really good shape of advancing uh, to the next round. I would say, although they still, you still need results. Let's put it that way. If they win, I think the whole thing is going all Bulgaria's way. Although um, Bulgaria won three games, but it was not always convincing. Gotta say that. So yeah, those are the. I want a league uh, B. I think there is um, the clash between um, Wales and Ireland. Probably is interesting to see, and I'm trying to think. I think that was that. So yeah, I mean everything is uh, France against Germany. That's that will be the game that I'll be watching. Although I really probably should watch Norway against uh, Bulgaria. Uh, 
gonna see if the game uh, is boring as the first one was, I might switch on uh, I like this I would like to see it uh, picture in picture or split screen or something like that, but uh, you know, you have to focus on walking. But I'll be curious to see uh, what Germany will get of France. Because they are now, they are a very wounded, wounded animal. And I'm curious to see if they will surrender or if they will uh, bite back. My gut feeling is they will bite back. We'll see. Well, that's all I have to say. For Ah, now let's quickly talk Jer jersey matchups. Uh, uh, Finland Greece was the nice one. I like those Greece blue jerseys. I was surprised that the other one is the only player in the uh, home kit, which is of course the flag. And it seems like it is a newer kit because um, it, it looks like a 2016 template, but uh, it's with blue sleeves and the other one had black sleeves. So uh, there is something new there and they have their own font, which was to me the most surprising thing. And I was surprised that Hungary played in all red, maybe because of the white socks of uh, Estonia, but I think Hungary could have played in their kit too. Uh, that looked a little bit odd. Uh, I mean, it was an amazing game from the highlights in Estonia. Okay. Well, let me know what you thought, what are your thoughts about all the games. I mean, the Nations League, we are getting to decision times. Um, would be curious to see what you think about that. Give me a thumbs up if you liked that video, liked my thoughts, um, subscribe to my channel. Oh, something's coming. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this. I will talk to you soon. Bye.